everyone, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, we are here with John Cruz, who is running for state rep. John, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for having me on your program. Oh, not a problem. Good to have you here. Um, can you tell the viewers at home what um, precincts and area uh, your uh, representation would cover for the 10th uh, district? Sure. It's about a third of the city of Brockton, which is uh, Ward 4, Precincts B and C, uh, Ward 5, Precincts B, C, and D, all of Ward 6, all the town of West Bridgewater, in Precinct 1 in, uh, in East Bridgewater. So it's, it's quite, a, quite an area. Quite a swath. Yes, it, yes it is. <laughs> um, and, and you're no newcomer to politics. Um, you, know, you previously were uh, involved with this position. Right, I'm a former state representative. I, I served back in the 90s. Uh, back then it was just uh, the same amount of Brockton and uh, the town of West Bridgewater. So this isn't new to me. Um, there's no learning curve connected with me as well. I mean, I know the players up there, fortunately, when I was elected back in 1990, they, uh, they put you into temporary office space according to alphabetical order. And my roommate for four months was a guy by the name of Bob DeLeo, who was the Speaker of the House. So I've gone to the House occasionally just to, to go to his office and speak with the man. So there's, a, there's an opening right there. And, uh, so you're in a, pretty much a unique position. Well, I, I, think, I, I think I am. I mean, considering uh, I'll be the Republican, and uh, let's face it, Charlie Baker and Karen Polito are going to be reelected. And uh, just it's similar to what it was back in 1990 with uh, Governor Weld and, and Lieutenant Governor Salucci. Um, the, the door is always open. And I, and I know Governor Baker. As a matter of fact, we have an annual pig roast at our house uh, at the end of every summer, and the governor's been there for the past two years. So well, we reach out to the governor, and he's fortunate to, to help us out. So it wouldn't be a bad thing for you to be able to have the governor's ear on certain issues? Not at all. And I, and I wouldn't be, uh, and that's my job. That's my job as a legislator to reach out to the, uh, to the governor, to the lieutenant governor, to, to help the needs of the community. So um, why have you decided to run this time around? Well, it's, uh, <laughs> the district needs better representation. The district needs a voice up there that's uh, a voice for the people in the district, not someone out there that's just promoting themselves, not someone out there has, that has their own self-interest that they want to promote. Um, and I had to do a... I had to do a write-in campaign. I, I didn't, uh, we've only been in the race for, I think this is week eight. Um, it was a week before the primary and you know, I, I was asked by quite a few people on this side, okay, so we, we had to do the, the write-in campaign. It wasn't easy, I mean, it was a, it was a push and I, and I fortunately had a great team, <clears throat> a great team to, to, to be at the polls all day and uh, we received, oh, I think like to a total of 800 signatures um, and, I, and I got them all across the, the ballot. I got, I got write-ins for U.S. Congress. I got write-ins for State Senate. I even got write-ins in West Bridgewater. I think I got like 30-some-odd write-ins on the Democratic ballot. So, I mean, I had a, I had a great amount of support. Uh, election Day was, was unreal. I mean, I had people approaching me who I'd seen in the area, seen around town for years, coming up to me telling me, John, we're here for one reason, that's to vote for you. And that's why we had a tremendous amount of Republican votes in West Bridgewater on, that, on primary day. What do you see the issues this time around for this election? Well, I think... I, the biggest issue is a voice, a voice up there on Beacon Hill, a voice for the people, not for someone's own agenda. Um, I, I often say, if you want to see where someone's going, look where they've been. I mean, back in, 19, in, in the 90s when I was a state rep previously, I mean, Brockton had some issues. I was the conduit to, to Beacon Hill. I was from the constituents to the, to the governor's office or to any other state services up there. But the other issues, I mean, I, I think, you know, the funding formula for, for education. It's, it's confusing, to say, the, to say the least. I mean, I, I teach uh, Southeastern at night. Oh, I don't teach this year because of, because of this campaign. I teach plumbing at Southeastern at night, nights. And, uh, you know, I think we need more kids in vocational schools. I, I, you know, I've got my own plumbing business. It's hard to get good help. And I'm not just saying plumbers. I'm saying all trades across the board. We need more slots at Southeastern to get more kids interested so they can learn a trade. You know, I like to tell people that um, the median age of a plumber in Massachusetts is 56 years old. So when that plumber retires in six or seven years, when five of those guys retire, there's only two to replace them. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen to the, to the homeowner that needs, that needs the services of a plumber? And then there's other issues. I mean, I, as I was walking Ward 6 in Brockton, I mean, the, the roads, <laughs> it's, it's dangerous up there. Where, where are the road repair? Where's our Chapter 90 money for, for road repair? Why aren't we getting our fair share? And I'm not just saying for Brockton. I'm saying mm -hmm. for the other towns as well. We need someone up there that's a voice I think for the district, for the constituents in the district, not just for themselves. Yeah, I think that around the city there are a number of um, uh, places that could use some, some TLC with regard to road repairs. Uh, 
and I know where you mean in, in terms of Ward 6 because I cut, cut through that way to um, get to work uh, in the morning. So there, there are some uh, precarious uh, obstacles to deal with. Um, but um, in terms of what you were talking about with regard to the um, uh, vocational uh, schools, and, and in particular, obviously, Southeastern, which is local to us, um, I, I would have to agree with you that um, there is a need for more openings and an expansion of those types of programs because to get in these days, it's extremely competitive. There are far more students who would like to get involved and, and be part of a Southeastern who are being turned away because it's so competitive uh, and, there are, uh, limited, and there's limited space. So an investment in that type of a um, uh, education certainly would a benefit the students that want to um, get into uh, all the different type of trade fields, but also you know like you said you know uh, the community as a whole because you know supply and demand if there aren't <coughs> enough people then you know the price of hiring someone to do X Y or Z around your house is going to be pretty costly, especially for people in. In, in, in some of our communities that you know, live on limited budgets. I can see that happening in the near future. People living on the seniors, living on a fixed income, I can see that happening uh, within, like I said, the next six or seven years. I think that's something that, personally, I'd like to address. Like I said, I, I taught Southeastern at nights, and I'd have you know, probably 28, 30 guys in my class. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a need for it at night, night school as well. Um, in, and I think also the veterans coming back. I mean, we have a lot of issues with, with veterans' issues. I think it would be a great opportunity for them to learn it. Too. Obviously, I'm, I'm a little bit biased toward the plumbing industry because I've been in it for sure. uh, all my life, and it's been very good to me. Yeah. But, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see more, more of the veterans get involved and, uh, and to learn a trade. And I, I think, it, like you said, Tom, in the end, it, it helps everybody. Absolutely. Um, you know, the other issue here we're uh, experiencing in Brockton, as you know, is uh, the funding for our schools. And, um, you know, we're facing every year for the last, you know, six or so years shortfalls con uh, consistently where we are laying off teachers every year. So every single year uh, from uh, last year to this year, we have uh, a, a, a smaller number of teachers teaching our kids. And our resources are really stretched in terms of being able to, um, you know, supply the children with you know, computers to make sure that they are, um, you know, competitive with other school districts, uh, with uh, materials, uh, with, with types of programs that other districts may have. Um, and, you know, we do have you know, a very good fine arts building, and there are programs there that we could impl uh, implement that, you know, could be, uh, you know, trade type of programs. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, we certainly um, need, uh, you know, our Chapter 70 funding looked at, and, and obviously our legislative delegation and a, and a representative would be instrumental in assisting this community, the city of Brockton, with those types of funding issues for our students. Well, I believe the governor just came to town with an additional resources for, to maintain some additional teachers, which is a plus. And I think by myself being up there as a Republican, that I, the additional resources that we need, I mean, it's, it's a matter of me making the call, me being the point man. And that, and that doesn't bother me. That's, that's how it was back in my, my previous life as a, as a representative. If there was an issue, that um, the other members of the delegation needed some assistance with, with it, my my office, we gladly assisted them, and it wasn't just for the it just wasn't for the um, for the emergency bailout for the Pilverta Palos payday for the city employees. It was for other areas as well, for other constituents in the other part of the city. The thing is, we all have to work together. Even though I represent the I will represent the east side of the city, the east side of Brockton, we still have to work together. We have to get to, I have to get together with Representative Cronin and Representative Brady. I say, excuse me, Senator Brady and Representative Cassidy. We all have to work together for the whole for the benefit of the of the district. That's and, what it comes down to: communication. And if you were elected, you don't see a problem with working with the other uh, reps and the senator. Not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, Representative Kennedy, uh, excuse me, Representative Cassidy worked for Representative Kennedy when I was there. In, uh, in Representative Kennedy, to to my to my blessing, he he helped me out get a, a great office space down there. And that's so I've, I've known Representative Cassidy for quite a few years. So there wouldn't be an issue with that at all. Or, or for that matter, reaching out to, to Rep. Cronin and for, to, to Senator Brady. That wouldn't be a problem at all. I look forward to it. That's great. Um, the, um, what are you also finding when you're knocking on doors? Um, you know, what's the um, reception that you're, you're receiving? Well, I, the issues that, uh, that we all have, obviously the, the crime is an issue in Brockton. 
crime is an issue in Brock and that, that needs to be addressed. And that's something that I tell him, hey, look, it, here's what I have to offer. My brother Tim is the district attorney. He's going to be reelected because of a lot of hard work. I can work with the district attorney's office in, into the area. I don't have all the answers right now. Like I said, I've only been in this for eight weeks. But when I get into office, I can come up with a plan, and we will help, we will help the district. But um, it's just they're angry about the current representative in there. The voting record, you know, quite frankly, the, the retroactive, pay, I mean, we, we know, we, we, we know we've, we've all read the papers, the embarrassment that's happened, over, and, and not just Brockton, Western East Bridgewater, the embarrassment that, that's occurred. We, we, we know about the retroactive pay raise, we know about with the, with the emergency attachment to it, we know about the, the uh, Civil War general statue out in front of the entrance to the State House, we know about the rumored ICE raid that put public safety in jeopardy, public safety and the residents. I mean, that's, that's what they're concerned about. And, they're, and frankly, they're embarrassed. They want to change. They want a voice up there, a voice that will be heard for them, not for, themselves, not for, the, for that individual themselves. That's what they want. And they do want change in a strong, strong, loud voice. Mm -hmm. And, in ter you know, Brockton obviously is a blue-collar city. Uh, lots of, uh, you know, lunch pail, uh, lunch pail Democrats and hardworking people. Um, um, the reception from those type of people? I've knocked on hundreds of doors in, in Brockton, mm -hmm. and it is a blue collar city. And when I tell them, I, I know, sometimes I knock on a suit with a suit, sometimes I'm working with my plumbing clothes, and I tell them, hey, look it, I'm a plumber. That's it. I don't have the college degree, but I've got a degree in hard, hard work, College of Hard Knocks. I know what it's like. I mean, I, I know what these people, the, the, the struggles that they have. I know what it's like to, to hear their pain about, you know, the uncertainty in the job market, and I try to, so, you know, soften them a little bit, like things, things are getting better, things are out there. Uh, but they just want someone that they know that when they make a call, that they're going to get the call back. And that, that, that person will assist them in their needs. And that's my track record. Like I said, that's how it was back in the 90s, when I, my previous life as a, as a legislator. That's how it was. I mean, we assisted these people. And it was, it was enjoyable just knowing that, you know, to get the thank you call afterwards. You know, thanks. I couldn't get through to that office, but you helped us out. I mean, unfortunately, the, the current, uh, my opponent has, it, it, that's, not the, that's not what I hear. It's nothing but, but obstructionism, fighting face on face, just, just argument, and that's, that's not good. That's not good for, for, for a, uh, it's not good for the environment, it's not good for the city, it's not good for the, for the communities. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of polarization out there. Yeah. Um, you know, people, um, you know, on one side of the aisle as opposed to the other side, you know, not really being able to work together. But, um, you know, one thing about the city of Brockton, I think that, um, you know, a, a lot of people in the community, you know, simply want uh, common sense, a common sense representation. Um, you know, I, I think they feel that, you know, if, if they work hard, that, um, uh, you know, everyone should have to be basically, you know, put in uh, so that, um, you know, as a whole, the community, you know, prospers and, and does well. Um, and, and I think a lot of people, you know, sort of look out there and say, you know, there's far too there's far too much nonsense going on in terms of I have to go to work every day, work hard, you know, pay my rent, try to save a little bit of money for a down payment if I want to try to buy a house, and, and, and they see a lot of people, um, uh, in some instances, living better than they are, yeah. not having to go to work, and 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 not you know really putting in the fair share, and and you know you sit there and scratch your head and say you know. What, what am I doing this for? You know, I'm, I'm killing myself to get health insurance. I'm killing myself to make my rent payment. You know, rents are going up all the time. Right. Um, you know, rents, you know, almost close to being a mortgage payment in many cases. Yeah. So it just seems like, you know, you know, the old, you know, work hard, get ahead. A lot of people see it as, you know, there's, there's too much nonsense that's, that's been allowed to go on and, and people are getting away with a lot, you know. True. What can I get as opposed to what can I, you know, give and, and put in in order to earn a living and in order to make a better life for myself and my family. But there's a, there's a lot of good hard working families out there, just mm -hmm. from, from my experience in the past couple of months from meeting people in, in Brockton. There's a lot of good hard work that have good core values and that's what we need. Right. We, we want, yeah, okay, someone might feel, well, maybe I'm working a little bit harder than the next guy. Maybe I'm a little bit more fortunate, but you know, hey, that's how it is. You know, we have to help the people that do need the help. I'm, 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 I might be a Republican, but I still have a hat. I mean, I don't mind helping the person out. You know, people get, people get down in their luck. They, they get down and they get into a bad spot. They need a little bit of assistance to get up on their feet. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't mind helping somebody out. 
but you hate to see abuse. So that's when we have to look at things like, okay, well, maybe we have to bring it back a little bit, look at the bigger picture, and see how we can to make, to make some corrections and adjustments so it's fair and equitable for everybody involved. The person that's paying the, the, their taxes in a, in a timely fashion, the people that are somewhat receiving the benefit, that, that person that works hard, goes to work every, you know, every day, is, is paying to them. So, I mean, it's, it's all, it all comes down to fairness. And, you know, I'm, myself being in business for 20, it's my 27th year, I mean, I've seen the highs and I've seen the lows. Right. And um, it's not always easy. You know, no, it's, it's not. And, and, no. And, um, but you have to do it. Sometimes it's a little bit leaner than the others. And then sometimes it's, it's, like, it's like life. So. One other uh, issue, certainly, that is hitting a lot of families and a lot of good people is, uh, you know, this opioid crisis. Uh, um, you know, a lot of heartache, uh, a lot of victims, uh, you know, family members, uh, people who are just, you know, driving, going to some place, and someone under the influence, uh, you know, has harmed them. You know, perhaps in some cases, you know, they've died of, uh, you know, a vehicular homicide right. because of, uh, you know, driving, you know, under the influence of an opioid or something. Where do you see, um, you know, where do you see things and, and what do you think should be done or can be done? Well, I understand that the mayor's, the mayor's program, the, what is it, the pro, uh, champion program, or mm. that, that seems to be working. Is it possible we can get more assistance, more money to the city to help them? I think when it gets, when it gets away from state or state government into, like, the cities and the towns, you see a little bit more control over it. And you have a little bit more guidance in terms of where the money can go and how you can help, help these people out. I mean, obviously, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. I, I don't think there's anybody in the audience that, that has not had a, had a relative somewhat connected to the opioid issue. I mean, uh, I don't have the answers for that right now, but I'll tell you, that's something I will work with the DA's office, and I will work and find a solution, along with the governor and the lieutenant governor, to come up with a solution. If it's more beds, more money, I will be there. I won't be just a, a, a you know, voice in the dark. Yeah. I'll be front and center. I think you also have to have the medical community involved yeah. as well, because... It seems like you know a lot of you hear the stories about how some people um, developed a, a habit or a problem with opioids, and it's basically right after a an injury, you know, that mm. they've been prescribed, right. and and you know the, the some of the prescriptions are just so powerful and so strong that it's hard to stop taking these things, and you know, so you say to yourself, well, you know. Do the physicians or do the pharmaceutical companies really know, you know, the extent of what they're prescribing? Um, you know, what, years ago when our parents, you know, had, a, let's say, a hernia operation or an operation, mm -hmm. you know, when we were kids, you know, you didn't hear about someone getting hooked, so to right. speak. You know, there was always a little pain involved and after an op after Yeah, and they dealt with it. But today you hear... Oh, oh, take this, you know, you got to get ahead of the pain. Right. Oh, you got to get ahead of the pain. You can't yeah. feel any pain after a procedure. Right. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you do need to feel a little bit of pain because, you, you, you know, taking... Maybe that's taking, the healing process. Yeah, I mean, you know, taking something that is just so strong and going to prevent you from feeling anything is going to have long-term, you know, problems on the, right. on the other end. I mean, you know, it just seems like it's, it's a problem that also the medical community and the pharmaceutical community has to come to the table with and, and either admit that, you know what, some of the stuff is too potent or, or what have you, and you know, we have to back off a bit, you know. You do have to, as the, you know, right. maybe part of the healing process, feel a bit of pain so that you're not... But you have to know that pain is good. A little bit of pain is good. I mean, yeah. we all, as we get older, we wake up in the morning, we get a little few aches and pains. And yeah, so right. have to huh? deal with it. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm not the doctor in my family. I've got an older brother that happens to be a doctor, and I've touched upon this briefly with him, but I don't have that answer right now. I just know that we need... I don't have the, the answer for the cure. I need... I think right now we need resources for the treatment. That's what we need. That's important. We need the resource, resources for the treatment. And that's what I'll be there for. And you're not going to get distracted with nonsensical issues? No, I'm not. You know, it's just, I just shake my head at times and I wonder why people say the things that they do, not look at. We have a job when we go up there. We're there to, to represent, the, the, to, to be a voice for the, for the people up there. You know, I might not get along with somebody. But if they call me with a problem, I'm going to do my best to take care of their problem. I'm not going to be in their face, get into an argument, get on the Facebook stuff. I'm not into that. If someone's got a legitimate problem, if they got a problem, they want to talk, talk to me. You know, I, I tell you, that was my, one of the, that's what I had back in my other life again. You know, I was always accessible, either through a, the state house or, or my plumbing business. Because I still have a, a good plumbing business I have to take, take care mm -hmm. of as well. I mean, I've got families that, that depend on 
the weekly pay. I tell people, you know, I just don't sign the back of a paycheck. I sign the front of a paycheck, which is true. It's been for 27 years. But I can deal with that. But we just need some, we, we need some assistance up there on Beacon Hill. And I'm the voice. I mean, I did it uh, back in the 90s, and I can do it again. I'm, I'm older and wiser, and I know the players involved. And I don't have a problem to pick up the phone to call the commissioner of any of whatever commissioner it may be or, or uh, any secretary of the department. I don't have a problem with that. You know, something else I'd like to talk about is the situation with the gas explosions that we had up north. You know, I, I happened to sit on the plumbing board in Boston. I was appointed by Governor Baker uh, two years, two and a half years or so ago. And it's something that I think I'd like to, you know, everybody in fear, as I was knocking on the doors in Brockton, and actually East Bridgewater, people were saying, well, and I tell them I'm a plumber, and they're like, well, is my gas service safe? Can you come in? There were a few houses that I looked in and assured that the things are, that things are okay and they, they appear to be running properly. But you never know things can happen. You never know what, they know the cause now what happened up in, up, up in North Shore. But things can happen down here. We always have to be careful. I would like to see a commission set up in the legislature, and I'd like to be on that commission, to investigate the utilities and how they go about the practices that they do. For instance, here's something that, that a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, in order to work on gas piping in-house, you need to be either a licensed plumber or a licensed gas fitter, unless you're an employee of a gas company. So if you're an employee of the gas company, you don't have to have any licensure. You can perform gas piping inside that house. Hmm. That needs to be addressed. That needs to be changed. Interesting. Yeah, that's no, something the, the average person wouldn't know that. And they don't know that, and they shouldn't know that, but that's mm -hmm. things that I've learned from being on the plumbing board in Boston. And that's something that when I, when I do get elected, I do want to make that change to that. We do need to take, care, take that away from the, why shouldn't they, why shouldn't that be individual that, I don't care if he works for the gas company or if he works for my, my own company, why shouldn't that person be, my guy's a licensed, why shouldn't the individual that works on the gas piping inside your house be licensed? And they're not. So that needs to be corrected, and that's something that I will work on. And obviously it's a safety issue. Of course it's a safety issue. It sure is. I mean, we're not talking a water pipe here that can leak and maybe flood your cellar. We're talking about natural gas. And we know when, and we, we, we've see what seen what happened up north. Yeah, I mean, and, and why is it that, you know, <clears throat> maybe I'm just, you know, I haven't paid attention, but I haven't heard this happen really anywhere else aside from, you know, in the northern you know, Merrimack Valley. Has it happened in other states? Is this, is this an issue that comes up every so often? And I so think it, uh, we probably, it happens, but we don't really pay close attention to it because it's, it's far away. I think it, there's a few instances that happened over the summer in Texas. Really? It did happen in Massachusetts, I think 10 or 12 years ago in Lexington. Really? But I think only uh, a small number of houses were impacted. Up there we've got, what, 8,500 people that are affected by this. Yeah, and, it's and crazy, 8,500 houses. Yeah, and these people, you know, certainly, you know, their whole lives and, you know, you know businesses in some, in some cases, I mean, their, their whole lives are, you know, upside Destroyed. down. Destroyed. Yeah, I mean, if you have a small business and you rely on, you know, the public and, you know, you can't have a restaurant or ha can't right. have whatever it is if you don't have your energy, your gas, I mean, you're, you're done. I mean, it, it's really devastating for so many people. And, and, it, and it still is. Yeah. You know, it's even, what's even harder to, to, to get is additional license licensed plumbers and gas fitters to work to do the repairs up there. You know, some of the houses, in the, especially in the city of Lawrence, there's a lot of plumbing and gas, pa gas pipe that needs to be replaced to bring it up to current standards. They just can't put the blinders on and sign off on it. So that stuff needs to be corrected. I mean, they're changing furnaces, water heaters, yeah. you know, yeah. the appliances. Yeah, I mean, it, it's but incredible. But we need to be careful. We need to, we need to be proactive. discuss this with the, uh, with the utility company. Yeah, so that it doesn't happen. No, you know, we can't. You know, and that's something else? I look forward to, to, to be on a committee that we can at least get them into the room and say, look it. You know, here's, here's an example right now. I, I own a house in one of the houses I own in West Bridgewater. I had to have a water service replaced this summer. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a gas line that ran parallel to the water service, so I called Dig Safe. Dig Safe showed up, and they said, "Well, I said I want the gas shut off so I can, you know, excavate the yard and, and replace the water service." And they said, "Well, we don't have a gas shut off here." I said, "What do you mean you don't have a gas shut off here?" Well, we have a volume valve that if there's a rupture in the line, it'll shut it off out in the street. But there is no gas service valve. Hmm. Unlike your water service, there's a curb cock in the in, your dry, in the uh, in the road, so you right. can shut the water sure. off. There is no valve in the street to shut the gas off. They rely on an excessive flow valve that will shut the valve off. Yeah, I'm, and, and I've been doing this, I've been in the plumbing business for what, over 30 years, and I'm, I'm, I was in amazement that this right, is that the, the situation situated, because yeah. the plumber's responsible, the, the licensed plumber, the licensed gas fitter is responsible for the outlet of the gas meter, not the service that leads up to the house, which is high pressure gas. Right, right. I mean, you're talking anywhere from, well, up to 99 right. pounds. Right, yeah. So well, it's you, just I, something I, that I, we need to look at. That's something I'm interested in, in really, 
And obviously your professional, uh, yeah. your professional experience would be instrumental in something like that. So that is, you'd be a great point person. That's, that's my point. That's why I'd like yeah. to, to be that, that person on that commission. Well, uh, believe it or not, we're, um, we're, we're almost out of time. We're coming up on about three minutes left. Wow. Um, yeah, well, you know, when you're having fun. <laughs> uh, uh, are there any other issues you would like to, you know, let the public know and, and, and hit on before? Uh, well, I want the people to know that um, I've done this before. I, I did this back in the 1990s, so I, there is no learning curve connected with me. I mean, I can hit the ground running the first week in January. I'll make the calls, and I'll reach out to the, to the, to the people in the district, and I just need your help and I need support. But we, most importantly, we need to get out there and vote on Tuesday. It's very important to get out there and vote. Even if you're, you know, you're just somewhat, you're not, you don't have to vote for everyone on the ballot, just get out there and vote. That's the problem that we have. So I, I just can't ex you know, express my concern to get people out there to vote. But hopefully you can vote for me. John Cruz for the state representative uh, 10th Plymouth District seat, and it's Brockton, West Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater. And uh, it's easy to get in touch with me. It's John Cruz for rep. That's what I was just going to ask you. Yeah. It's John Cruz for with the number four rep.com. I mean, uh, we, we get. We actually, we got requests today for more lawn signs. It's, it's, it's crazy how this stuff works. I'll tell you, Tom, it wasn't like this back in the 90s when I ran. I mean, all, all the Facebook, and it's just well, I was gonna, things are quickly. If we, yeah, I mean, what do you see in terms of the difference with regard to social media today as opposed to... Huge. You know, yeah. Huge. And it's great. People know quicker what's going on. And then again, they can reach out to me and get a response back from me faster. But I'd, I'd appreciate the consideration for vote next Tuesday. Uh, it's John Cruz, state representative... Brock in West Bridgewater and East Bridgewater. And again, my, my, web, my Facebook is John Cruz for Rep. It's John Cruz. My website is johncruzforrep.com. All right, thank you for having me on your program today. Oh, pl my pleasure. Um, you know, it's obviously, you know, you come with a, a, a lot of experience. Um, you, you know, the other thing is, you know, you're, you're a small business person. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, see you know, day to day, you know, a lot of people in terms of customers, employees, um, you know, you're, you're out and about, um, you know, you have experience in terms of you know, what real people are feeling out there, what real people are experiencing, how, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you know, what hard work brings and, you know, in terms of, you know, people wanting to do better and, you know, you certainly have uh, done a great job, you know, in your career, um, you know, so, you know, you certainly have the um, personal experience, the professional experience, and you know the past political experience to be, you know, uh, effective. So um, you know, it's certainly my pleasure to have you in, and um, I think people are going to give you a, a, a good look because, you know, I, I think that uh, you know people want representation uh, for this community and and don't want crazy distractions. They yeah. want they want you know people to put in energy towards important commonsensical issues that affect everyday people. What I tell the people also is that I'm not a career politician and I will not make this a career issue, uh, a career job in my life. And if you don't like me, it's another election in two years, get rid of me. <laughs> that's what I tell them. Yeah. I mean, that's just give me a chance. Let me show you what I can do. And if it doesn't work out, gone. But I'll tell you, you won't be disappointed. I will be a voice for everybody out there. Well, I'm sure people are going to give John Cruz a, a hard look on election day and um, Really appreciate you coming Thank in. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. My pleasure.